Hey guys, Retro Ralph here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're gonna disassemble this rampage. But why, Retro Ralph? Why would we do that? We're gonna do it because we're gonna convert it into a TMNT cab. So grab your screwdriver, sit back, relax, and let's do this. The time has come, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <coughs> Before we get started, I wanted to go over a couple things. This modification had a lot of hiccups and roadblocks along the way. So I just wanted to share some of those with you before we get started because the project kind of took a couple different turns um, that weren't the original intent of the project. So originally I really wanted to build this system based on the original arcade hardware. So the printed circuit board that the actual game ran on in 1989. Uh, and you know, with that comes some can come some problems because you know these boards are old and you know just because it worked when it was sold to you doesn't mean when you power it up on the other end it's not going to encounter an, an issue because you think about it this board is spent it's old it uh it's seen better days right so it uh typically though you know they work out okay but um you know this one didn't so i had some audio issues and it was going to cost me two hundred dollars to fix and with with the board and keep in mind guys this is not a cost effective way to build this cabinet um with, with the board being five hundred dollars it was going to be another 200 to fix that's seven hundred dollars this just wasn't you know it wasn't in the cards for this project it's really expensive the good news the sort of blessing in disguise is that how i did end up building this is based on RetroPie, and it is a cost-effective way to do it. So I guess um, you know I didn't have to mess with this, and you know I didn't have to mess I didn't have to mess with arcade power supplies and JAMA harnesses. So I guess that's also a blessing in disguise, if you want to call it one. So um, so going down the RetroPie route also had its challenges because with a four-player game, uh, you've got to figure out. Uh, I need an encoder for each for each turtle. Uh, I have a solution that I kind of came up with uh, that I think came out pretty good. So let's just, uh, we'll dive right in. I'm going to do an overview of the cabinet and show you guys some of the unique modifications I did to it. I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. It looks really nice. That's, uh, that, that's for sure. I feel like from a graphics perspective, it looks awesome. So let's, uh, let's dive in and, and take a look at what's, uh, what's in this thing. All right, guys, let's get to work. We gotta take this bad boy apart. So the only thing I'll say here is just please do this with caution. Um, what I've noticed is taking these apart and putting them back together multiple times does weaken it a little bit. So um, just like an Ikea piece of furniture, moving it too many times is not always a great thing. So just be careful and take your time. The other thing, I just wanna apologize that my butt crack shows multiple times in this video and no one wants to see anybody's butt crack. So I apologize, but there's no chance I'm going back and refilming this at this point. So you're just gonna have to deal with it. Anyhow, I'm almost done taking it apart. Set your pieces aside somewhere safe. Make sure they don't get scratched up and ruined. And at this point, we're uh, going to get ready to put on the decals. So I chose to do a wet application for this. So you'll notice I taped down the sides of the cabinet, and then I'm working with the first half of it at this point, and then I'm going to do the back half after. So as soon as I peel that backing back, you're going to want to cut that off. And my suggestion would be to get a really sharp X-Acto knife, and it should cut off real nice. After you cut off that strip, you can lay down your first piece, and then after that, you can lay down your back piece. I don't know if I used the best strategy here, but this is what I came up with, and it worked pretty good. So after that, you're going to want to squeegee out any of that excess water underneath and get out any air bubbles. Take your time with this and use back and forth motions, uh, and you should be okay. Now you're going to go and trim it. So again, you're going to bust out that sharp X-Acto knife. Be really careful with this part. Uh, my only tip would be to just be very careful and patient. You don't want to mess this up. These, these packs are you know, kind of expensive. So we're ready for reassembly. I didn't show you all of the parts, but it was pretty much wash, rinse, and repeat on the vinyl decals, but came out really good, and I was happy with it. So uh, 
We're on to the next piece. I decided to do a coin door for this modification. I tend to use a Dremel with this kind of work just because um, I can be more precise and I won't mess up. So uh, that piece will just pop right out and the coin door will go right in. And I'm using a fake coin door. It actually is just the door. It just opens. It does not have a coin mechanism. But uh, that's what I wanted to use for this modification. So I'm happy with that choice. Um, onto the control panel, you're just going to want to cut out the holes and be really careful, uh, again using a really sharp X-Acto knife, but just take caution on this, um, there are notches in these holes that were from the stock buttons, so just be careful when you get to that point and try to uh, do it as best you can, but uh, that's that, and on to the speakers, I decided to mount the speakers on the top rear panel, I think this is the best placement, the sound, it sounds great, it usually bounces off the back wall, uh, my OCD is driving me crazy because that sticker Arcade 1UP put on Crooked, but uh, I guess you won't see it, so it doesn't matter. But I'm real happy the way that came out, and I think we're ready to kind of show off the unit at this point. I'm going to go back, put it back together, and give you guys a walkthrough. All right, guys, it is finally the time to showcase the TMNT cab. I'm sorry it took me so long, but here it finally is. So let's start from the top, and then we'll go down. So from the top, you see the marquee graphics. It is not a lit marquee, but I plan on converting that eventually. Thank you, Tyler over at Arcade Graphics for doing a great job on the graphics. Uh, as you go down, you see the bezel. I left the monitor as a 17 inch. I have not changed that. I think I'm gonna leave it. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, when we get to the control panel, there's some interesting things here. So like I said, my original design was gonna have um, have the arcade board and I actually had different buttons, but I uh, have a whole plethora of buttons laying around So I decided to do them as colored buttons the colors correspond with the turtles uh, However, the only thing that you'll notice when I do some gameplay is the red button is actually not Raphael It's Donatello right now because I'm having a hard time finding anybody that has purple LEDs in stock. So uh, We'll get to that later. So down here you'll find the coin buttons and each coin does correspond, each credit button does correspond with the turtle. So if I hit, um, if I hit the blue button, I'm going to get Leonardo, you know, yellow, Michelangelo, and so on, right? So um, I tried to make those co correspond with the buttons um, or the player above that. Um, this is a USB port. I put this here so that you could play the fourth turtle if you wanted to. So if someone's here um, and we have four players, you can play the fourth turtle. Uh, as you go down here, I put in a coin door. This is from Twisted Quarter. If you haven't seen my video on this coin door, go check it out. It is a coin door that is does not have coin mechanisms. So it's just a door. But the reason why I put this here is because I personally, and I've said this before in videos, I personally like having the amp right here because I can adjust volume and everything uh, quick and easy right from the front of the cabinet. And I don't have to worry about mounting the amp maybe in the back or something like that. So... Uh, this is great quality coin door, um, and you can buy this with mechanisms or without. I really liked it without mechanisms for this application, and I'll tell you why. With a four-player game like this, uh, I would have had to buy, if I wanted to be authentic, a four, you know, four coin mechanism coin door. That gets expensive, and honestly, I'm not so sure that the integrity of the cabinet could handle handle that without printing a new a new piece of, of, of wood for that front panel. All right, let's uh, let's spin it around back and check out what's going on back there. All right, let's swing around the back side of the cabinet now. So starting from the top, you'll notice two five and a half inch speakers. These are actually uh, kicker speakers that are designed for a car. Uh, they work really, really well in here. And one of the things I enjoy about this is that um, the sound quality is seems to be really good when the speakers are mounted in this position and allowing the, the sound to reflect off the wall. That was actually a tip of one of the users in a Facebook forum somewhere. An audio guy was saying that's probably a great place to put it. So uh, I've had a lot of success there and I continue to do it on, on modifications. You're probably wondering what this is. This is actually a sensor for the remote control for the unit, and that is for the video controller board, and I'll go over that a little bit more in a minute as we scroll down here on the system. All right, let's get further into the depths of the turtles. So if you look in here, um, you'll notice I mounted the speaker wires on the side. Those go up to the speakers, like I said, that are up there. Um, you'll notice those speakers are mounted on either side, and I've got them tied down with wire ties. 
So um, as we get closer, the controller board here I use, I will have a link in the description of that controller board. I use a controller board that allows you to have a remote control uh, for a couple reasons. You can, you can um, change the volume up and down and uh, the settings of, of the display without having to go to the back of the unit. So I really like that. Um, one thing you'll notice here, you'll notice there's three USB encoders. Well, that was by design because when I realized I couldn't use the arcade board anymore, I had to come up with a solution. So in order to do a three player or a four player option with um, Raspberry Pi slash Retro Pi, you're gonna need uh, multiple USB controllers. So for every player, you're gonna need a USB controller. So um, that's what I did there. I put three of them in, or sorry, I said controller, I meant encoder. So um, yeah, you'll have three USB encoders. It was a little tricky getting them configured, but, uh, but I got it configured uh, without problems. So as we go down here, avoiding that board, um, you'll see the coin door. So in the coin door, this was actually, uh, I, I got better at mounting this in this particular one as in comparison to my Street Fighter. So what I did was I got a, um, some wood. It's like these wood, um, I don't know what you call them, but it's basically a half inch square long piece of wood and it comes in strips. It's like a long strip. I think it was eight feet. And I cut those and actually it ended up being the perfect uh, width for filling the gap between the coin door and the actual front panel. So I was pretty stoked on that. And uh, that worked out really well. And that piece of wood is really cheap and you can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. So as we move back a little bit, you'll see the audio amplifier. Keep in mind, guys, I almost finished with the wiring. I'm not quite done yet. So there's a little bit, uh, it's a little messy, but it's getting better. Uh, the amplifier, I've actually done a review on this amplifier. It's the uh, Lapai LP, I think it's 168HA. Uh, it has, um, has pretty decent sound output, so I like that. And one thing that I added to this cabinet that I haven't done on any other modification is I put a subwoofer in the cabinet. So uh, I gotta say my initial reaction to that is it's just okay. It rattles the crap out of these cabinets. So I have noticed if I keep the sub down really low, it gives you just enough punch to sound good without rattling too much in the cabinet. And then you can see I've got uh, the retro pie that's driving it all. So I did do something unique with this modification. Many of you may not know this and you may not have done this before, but you can set up a retro pie uh, as a single ROM system. So this thing boots up and it goes straight into the ROM. So I w really wanted to maintain the arcade experience. The problem was is that when I, when the arcade board wasn't gonna work anymore for me because of the problems I had, I was kind of bummed because I wanted to maintain a little bit of an arcade experience with the whole system. And uh, so that's how I did it. I ended up making that a single um, bootable retro pie. So when I power it up, it goes straight into the game um, no delay or anything like that. So, I mean, obviously it has to boot, but outside of that, there's the side of the cabinet right there. You can see the arcade board is sitting on that chair over there. The sad arcade board didn't work out. Sorry, arcade board. Um, but I guess now what we'll do is we'll swing around. I'll show you a little bit of gameplay. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the game, but it might be interesting for you to see, uh, gameplay and, uh, yeah, then we'll, I'll give you my final thoughts and we'll wrap this up. Hey guys, I wanted to mention one other thing that was kind of a benefit of using RetroPie. The fact that um, I'm loading into MAME means I can access from a keyboard um, dip switches as well as um, cheats. And I didn't actually know there were cheats on MAME for this game and there's a ton of cool cheats. So that's kind of a neat benefit of running this game under RetroPie where, uh, you know, had I had the arcade board, I wouldn't have had access to those things. So kind of cool. And while we're at it, I should probably mention something. You're probably wondering why there's a scorpion tied to the end of my beanie. So there's a story behind this. So last year around this time, I got stung by a scorpion. I live in Arizona, if you guys don't know that. And uh, I told the guys at work because I was like, man, I'm going to miss this call. I got to figure this out. I just got stung by a scorpion. And so uh, I hurt really bad I, and I just was kind of freaked out about it. And so the, the next week we had a, uh, an offsite meeting and someone put this, and I was wearing the sweatshirt, someone put this in my notebook and I opened it up and I was like, ah, yeah. I was like freaked out so bad. I cussed a bunch, but I'm not gonna do that for the video. But anyway, so it was funny because today I wanted to put this sweatshirt on and I forgot that I tied it to this and I opened it up and I was like, ah, 
Cinema! When I opened it up. <laughs> so anyways, kind of funny. I just wanted to add that because, uh, I don't know, whatever, because I'm weird like that. But anyways, let's, uh, let's do some gameplay and, and then we'll wrap this video up. Let's do it. Oh, not a good way to start. So the subwoofer really makes that explosion when someone dies rumble pretty pretty bad. I mean, it's good. It's good bad. I really wish I could have had... Dang it. I really wish I could have had the original arcade board, but I gotta admit, the Raspberry Pi, or the Retro Pi, actually doesn't... It doesn't play that much different, if anything. I can't really even tell. But it was just kind of the geek factor of having the board that was kind of getting me pumped up. So I'm going to let this guy die so I can be a different turtle. Okay, so it's game over. I'm going to go over here. Like I said, this guy's mapped to Donatello right now. I just changed the difficulty to hard, too, with the dip switches, so I'm probably going to die really quick. Here, I'm going to let this guy actually die. I really want to show you the other players. Okay, I'm just going to put them on. Just so I show you all of them at the same time. Anyway, I'm happy with it, guys. I feel like it came out really good. I'm happy that you can play all the turtles. Um, you know, and like I said, you can plug in a controller and play Raphael. So... I don't know. I'm good with it. I feel like it's a good, it's a completed modification. So I appreciate all the patience waiting for me to get this video out. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. And uh, if you did, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video and uh, hit that notification bell so you can be informed of future updates. And thanks for joining, guys. See you on the next one.